this guy, this keyboard right here. I mean, I really had a tough time putting it all together with, you know, the missing parts and the issues and whatnot, but I thought that it was actually all over and that I could finally enjoy using this keyboard, which honestly said, it does feel pretty good typing on it. But then, this happens. Yeah, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It's just RGB after all, but it's just like, come on, you know, one thing after another, like seriously. So today's video is about trying to figure out how to fix it, though I'm pretty sure that I have a pretty good idea as to how to do that. So let's see if I'm right. Right, so my suspicions as to why this keyboard isn't working. Okay, well, fine, that's incorrect. Only the RGBs aren't working, but I digress, have very much to do with the LEDs being wired in such a way that if an LED is blown, the subsequent LEDs down the line won't be able to light up. I say this because I noticed that the LEDs that aren't being lit aren't exactly in a row, but rather it just stops after this guy right here. So my guess is that it's this LED that is the issue. So let's take the keyboard apart and see if replacing it works. With the board out, I think we see our first hurdle with working on it. The LED is of course surface mounted and usually to remove components like this, I would use hot air, but there is plenty of plastics around it and using hot air enough to melt solder would most definitely melt the surrounding plastics and make the situation a whole lot worse. So that's 100% out of the picture. So what, it's game over then? There's no way to remove it once it's on there without damaging other components? Well, without the correct tools, yes, it may seem that way, but luckily I still do have one trick up my sleeve and that is low melt solder. As the name implies, it greatly reduces the melting temperature of solder and it also stays liquid for much longer, which should help me remove the LED without damaging anything else. Let's get under the microscope, shall we? Unfortunately, the footage from my microscope bugged out a little. I guess that's what you get for using cheap microscopes, but it is what it is. Regardless, I'm going to try and show you guys the footage from it the best that I can. As usual, I'll start out with a bit of flux on the legs of the LED. I uh, mix the solder on the legs with that low melt solder, and after heating both sides up, I'm able to remove the LED without issue. I clean the pads of any existing solder with my soldering wick, some more flux onto the pads, set the new LED in place making sure to align the legs correctly, then with some solder on the tip of my iron, I just touch the legs slightly to transfer that solder over, and we're pretty much all done. Before I reassemble the keyboard, one of the things I like to do prior is test the board first to see if the repair is even successful and, I mean, was there even any out. The LEDs are fully working once more and so now I can reassemble the keyboard and use it. That's it for this video, it's a bit of a short one but I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. Like if you liked it, share it to someone who might find it helpful and comment down below if you've maybe tried something like this before or if you plan to. My name is Yang, the tech rodent and thank you for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video.